being competent at healing PvP content in the Elder Scrolls Online is actually not that difficult. You just cover the basics and make sure you have a build that allows you to stay alive as you help out your group. I even made a video what feels like ages ago where I go over many of the basics. But suppose that just being competent isn't enough. Maybe you want to be in a position where you outperform most other healers and where you are welcome in pretty much any PvP group looking for a healer, no matter the skill level of that group. In that case you have to step up your game, and that involves learning a bunch of things that are not really explained anywhere, let alone in the game itself. As such, the aim of this video is to give you concrete ideas of what to work on when you don't just want to be another player with a resto staff, but a valued healer that can make the difference for their group. Whether it's for Cyrodiil or for the new battlegrounds that will be added for update 44, Following these tips successfully will set you apart from the vast majority of PvP healers in a matter of weeks, even if you're just starting out yourself. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> PvP does not work with static rotations. Encounters are dynamic and which skill you should prioritize depends on the situation. It will take a lot of practice before this will start to come naturally. While it may be tempting to spam your burst heal skill before anything else, my advice is to always start by keeping an eye on your uptimes. With this I mean keeping up your heal over time skills, such as echoing vigor and radiating regeneration, as well as any vital buffs you provide to yourself and or the group. Buffs such as major evasion, major resolve or major brutality. Even if you might be off with your burst heal timing, a high uptime of these vital heals over time and buffs will make for a good basis of survivability for both you and the rest of the group. It's also fairly easy to learn. After some practice, buff uptimes will become almost second nature, and you can start to pay more attention to timing your burst heals, ultimate timing, and other quote-unquote secondary skills. If you're on PC, you can monitor these uptimes through ESO logs, but if you're on console, just keep a good eye on your ability timers and make sure you recast your skills before they run out. <laughs> Since I began making healing content for ESO PvP, a question I often struggle answering is, what is the best setup for a healer? As a healer, you are by definition part of a group, where you heal other people while keeping yourself alive. The best setup to do this with depends on that context. How many people are you playing with? Is it an organized group or is it casual? Are you doing Cyrodiil or Battlegrounds? What are your teammates wearing? These and other questions will determine what the best setup is for that particular situation. So in general, I'd advise any PvP healers to remain flexible. If you want to gain a reputation as a skilled, reliable healer and have a lot of groups want to play with you, make sure you have a bunch of setups and, if possible, even classes ready so you can adjust according to what's needed. In my case, I have a general healing setup on my sorcerer that I can use in any situation and do well. This is also the build I described in my latest build video. Then I have a bunch of sets ready that I can use on my sorcerer or pretty much any other class in case a more specific approach is needed. So at the very least, start by collecting useful sets such as Transmutation, Spell Power Cure, Powerful Assault, Phoenix Mothy Urge, Pillager's Prophet, Apocryphal Inspiration and Rallying Cry. Farm useful mythics for healers. Nowadays these are mainly just Death Dealer's Feet and Snow Treaders. Commonly used arena weapons are the Restoration Staves from Maelstrom Arena and Dragonstar Arena and the Dual Swords from Black Rose Prison. Popular monster sets in this row are Osazan, Symphony of Blades, The Blind and Earthcore. With these ingredients you can make a large variety of healing builds according to the needs of your particular group. Make sure you have as many weapon skill trees leveled as possible on your character, except for maybe bow and two-handed which are never used on PvP healers. Having this flexibility is useful because some groups can be quite specific and strict about what they want you to run. You'll also notice that once you gain a reputation for getting the job done, you might get a little more freedom in how you build your healer. Until then, it's useful to be able to run the exact setup that's asked of you. <laughs> 
One thing I always recommend to healers is to avoid the temptation of crutches early on. What do I mean by crutches? Skills, sets or other build or gameplay elements that make your life easier when you're just starting out, but might lock you into a suboptimal playstyle further down the line. A great example of such a crutch is Oakensoul. If you want to become the best healer you possibly can, I highly recommend avoiding Oakensoul altogether. The one bar might offer you certain benefits when you start out and you still struggle with bar swapping and buff up times, but in the end it will severely limit the utility you can provide. Of course, if you suffer from a disability or you, for whatever reason, just keep struggling with ESO's gameplay, Oakensoul is a completely valid option to help you reach a baseline and have some fun in the game. Or maybe you don't want your game to be too tryhard and you're fine settling into a playstyle that is not optimal but enjoyable to you. But when you have the choice to either play with one bar or learn how to play with two, I recommend doing the latter. It'll pay off in the end. Other crutches can include unneeded tankiness. If you make a mistake and you get punished for it, at least you can learn from it and improve. But if you don't feel the consequences of your mistakes immediately, it'll be harder to adapt later on. I've known players who could just not bear to play without at least one tank set, such as Pariah, and Vampirism 3 in its old form, or some selfish skill like Repentance for Templars. This limited their utility in a group and it didn't even result in them surviving for longer than I did in a more squishy build simply because I had gradually learned how to play around it. I have a separate video where I talk about PvP healers and tankiness more in depth, which I can assure you was not controversial at all, so I can recommend giving that a watch if you want to know more about my views on the matter. The bottom line is that, if you want to learn fast, try starting with a build that gives the maximum amount of utility to your group. Then, as you encounter issues with, for example, sustain, survival or mobility, you can start adding in more selfish elements to compensate. This approach will allow you to learn a lot quicker than when you come at it from the other way, where you start out all tanky and then probably get too comfortable with it to want to change anything. This is pretty much the exact advice I got when I first started healing, and it's a major reason for why I'm even here able to make in-depth videos about ESO's PvP healing. When I look at the best healers in the game, the biggest thing that separates them from healers who are just good is their ability to position themselves well. In theory, good positioning is pretty simple. You need to be close enough to your allies for your heals to actually hit them, but not so close that you'll get caught in the crossfire. When your group is under heavy pressure, you need to be in a position where you can heal into them without being under that same pressure yourself. If you're stunned or hit by a cold fire ballista, this will disrupt the healing of your group. So the more you can prevent this, the more consistent you'll be. In practice, this can be a challenge, as PvP in this game can be very hectic and you need to learn how to identify the relative safest position on the battlefield while also not straying too far from your allies. You also need to learn how to anticipate your group's movement, so you can be either behind or ahead of them and keep casting your heals if needed. Learning this is a longer process that requires some trial and error, but it's important to at least be aware of the skill and try to hone it. The best way to do so is simply to record your gameplay and evaluate it, and try to identify the moments where standing in the wrong place at the wrong time got you in trouble. This is also why I am generally against building in too many failsafes into a healing build in the form of excessive tankiness. As I said before, if you make a mistake, you need to feel it. And if you then learn from such mistakes, you'll quickly start separating yourself from the majority of the PvP healers in this game. <laughs> One thing that can help you get a better perspective on a battlefield is to experience it from different points of view. These points of view can be offered by joining different groups. Healing an organized group is a different experience from healing an uncoordinated zerg. And healing a battleground is different than tagging along with your casual guild's weekly Cyrodiil session. When I first started healing, I would play with just about any group that would have me. This could at times be challenging and frustrating in an equal measure, but it did teach me not to take my group for granted. Different perspectives can also be offered by different roles. 
While these days I'm main a healer in most groups, I also play a DD on occasions just to get a better perspective of what they need from a healer. For example, only when I played a DD did I notice in how many instances a well-timed altered synergy saved my behind. So when I was back on my healer, I started being much more diligent about placing altars during intense battles. Or when I play a speed bot support and then I switch back to a healer, I'll be more aware that I shouldn't stray too far from the group if I want to keep getting that speed buff. Playing outside of groups once in a while can also help you learn what's out there in terms of gameplay, skills and builds. I don't play solo all that much these days, but I did start out that way and it taught me a thing or two about self-preservation, some of which still comes in handy when I'm singled out or I'm the last man standing in one of my groups. I've also known players who just commit to one role, like players who only heal ball groups. You can kind of notice this because they'll generally have more trouble positioning themselves, adjusting their builds on the fly and adapting to the many unexpected situations you can encounter in PvP. Even if you main a healer, I highly recommend you at least try out different groups and if possible also different classes, builds and roles to gain more of an understanding of how you can help your allies. I hope that these tips help you get the most out of being a PvP healer in The Elder Scrolls Online. I think it's an activity that is not too difficult to learn and once you start getting good at it, you'll have plenty of guilds who'll want to play with you. If you have more specific questions about PvP healing, please drop them in the comments below. And if not, see you next time.